We're going to start with a single coin. So with a single coin, you can either land on heads or the flip side of that coin would be to land on tails. This gives us a really nice, easy sample space. So my sample space consists of two possible outcomes, either heads or tails. So if I do some probabilities, I know that the probability of whatever my outcome is, I'll do heads this time, is going to equal the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So in this case, I have heads, which is a single favorable outcome. So one out of two total outcomes, so one out of two. So that would be 0.5 if we divide or 50%. Let's say that we wanted the probability of getting either heads or tails. Well, if you think about it, no matter how you toss this coin, you are going to end up with either heads or tails. It's a 100% chance. It's a certain thing. If I break it down, though, now I've got both of these favorable outcomes. So I have two favorable outcomes out of the total, which is going to give me two out of two, which is one or 100%. Let's move into two coins where it gets just a little more complicated, and then we'll even take a look at three coins. Before we get into our two coin example, please take just a minute and click like if this video is helpful for you. I also encourage any comments or questions that you've got for me down below. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so here we've got two coins. For these two coins, I can get either, so this would be my first coin, I can get either a heads or a tails on the first coin. Same on the second coin, right? But I can follow that first heads with a heads or a tails on the second coin. And I can follow the first tails with either a heads or a tails on the second one. This gives me a tree diagram. A tree diagram is a really great way of looking at all of your possible outcomes. It's usually oriented a little differently. So if I orient it this way, first coin, I can either get a heads or a tail. Second coin, I'm just gonna turn this diagram on its side. Heads can be followed by either a heads or tail on the second coin. Tails on the first can be followed by heads or tail. Now let's put that sample space together. As we put our sample space together, my sample space is going to follow through each of these branches to come up with a pairing. So if I go back to my pen, I can describe my sample space as this set. Heads with heads, that would be one possible outcome. Following the next branches down, that would be heads with tails. So heads follow with tails. Order does matter here because now we've got uh, tails followed by heads, so T-H. And then finally, that last pairing is T and then T. Okay, there's our sample space. That means that we have for the total number of outcomes N, we've got one, two, three, four possible outcomes. That's our denominator. Let's go ahead over here and do some examples. Number one, what's the probability of getting two heads? Well, the probability of getting two heads, there is only one double head, head, head in that set. So there's one in there out of the total number of outcomes, four. So that's going to be one out of four. If I divide that in my calculator or just think about it, that's going to be 0.25 or 25%. Number two, what's the probability that we get exactly one H, so one head? Let's go ahead and go back through here. I'm going to grab my red pen now. I just want one H. So this one doesn't count, but I do want the HT and I want the TH. I do not want the T and the T. So back over here, that gives me two favorable outcomes out of the four. That reduces down to one half, 0.5 or 50%. Number three, we can do an at least here. Let's do the probability that we get at least one tail. I can break this one down into cases. So this would be the probability of getting exactly one tail, at least one, so two would work two, 
or, so I'm going to add those probabilities together, getting two tails. Well, here's what it looks like when I go ahead and count favorable over total. My favorable outcomes, I'll take either one or two. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to take this one. That gives me three favorable outcomes out of the four. So three fourths would be 0.75 or 75%. Let's do this one more time, but now with three coins. The first coin could be either heads or tails. So heads or tails. I can follow that with a heads or a tail, heads or a tail on the second coin. I can follow that one with a heads or a tail going all the way through here on the third coin. So notice how I get a lot of possibilities here. Now, I could write it all out, and if I were to write this sample space out, it would at least begin this way. With this first branching here, this first branching would be H, 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 and I can follow these down. So that would be H, H, H. And then the second branching would be H, H, T. So H, H, T. I'm not going to write all these, don't worry. And then H, T, H. Order does matter here. H, T, H. And so on. What I really need to do my probabilities is the number in the sample space. I can come up with that much more easily. So the number in the sample space, um, that's going to be the ends of all of my branches. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight different endings to those branches. So that means that the number in my sample space is eight. I can also do this with the multiplication rule. I've got three different events. Remember, I've got the first coin. I've got the second coin, and I've got the third coin. We call this a multiplication principle, but I can multiply the outcomes together because it builds the branches in my tree diagram. So this is gonna be two times two times two. You multiply that together and you get that same number in the sample space, which was eight. Okay, so we've got the number in our sample space. We have an idea of what these look like, so I can go ahead and do some probabilities. So let's go ahead and go down here. Number one, what's the probability of coming up with, let's do um, all three tails, tail, tail, tail. Well, that's a really easy one. I picked an easy one to start because there's only one of those. There it is. So I only have one of those. So one favorable outcome out of eight total. You can put this right into your calculator. So one divided by eight to get the decimal. 0.125 or about 12.5%. So about, not about, that's actually exactly 12.5%. Um, number two, let's say the probability of getting, um, let's do two tails. So I can get my tails in a couple of different places. I can go through my tree diagram and I can find those or I can go ahead and build what it might look like. I can get the two tails in the first two positions, followed by heads. I can get tail and then heads and then tail, or I can get heads and then tail and then tail. There's no other way to put two of them together. So I get one, two, three of these. So that's gonna be three out of eight. And if I put that one into my calculator, three divided by eight, I get the percentage equivalent, 37.5%. So 37.5%. Number three, so we'll just do this last one here. What's the probability of getting zero tails? If I think about this one, zero tails, um, I could go through there and look for whatever has zero tails, but I know there's only one way for that to happen. The only way for that to happen is if I end up with all heads. So the probability of getting zero tails is the same as getting the probability of all three H's, which is gonna be just one possibility out of the eight or that same 12.5%.
I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching.